Hi, this is John with Versafeed.com. Today we're going to be looking at our tool Google Shopping Manager or GSM and we're going to be looking at this from the eyes of agencies. How can AdWords agencies best use this tool to help their clients? A quick overview of what we're going to discuss. One, let's look at AdWords, see what the problems are in dealing with Google Shopping. Two, let's look at our solution, Google Shopping Manager. And then lastly, if you do want to utilize Google Shopping Manager as an agency, what options do you have? Okay, so here we are in the AdWords interface. We are in the auto target section and let's look at what I would consider some of the limitations of this particular area. So when we create a new auto target or a product target, whatever you'd like to call it, you get a couple of options here, but there's not too many. You can choose the ID to do a SKU bid, you can choose the product type to do a category kind of bid, or you can specify the brand. That's typically what agencies stick with because the rest of these are either kind of worthless or they require access to the feed directly to modify. In particular, AdWords Labels is very powerful and that's what we use as feed providers to make groups in any kind of fashion that we want. But it's hard for agencies unless you're, you're also managing the feeds to actually insert AdWords Labels. So it's not a super powerful tool that you see before you and that's one of the problems. The second is that you see here what we call the comparator, as in there's only one comparator, the equal sign. So everything has to match directly. So let's say you've got a client and you're trying to set up a bid for categories and you just want to say if the category contains the word sandals or contains the word boots or contains the word slipper or whatever. You can't do that. You have to fill out the entire thing and match it exactly with the equal sign. You also can't do things like if the price is greater than a certain amount or the price is less than a certain amount. So we feel this particular interface for auto targets is really lacking and that's really the impetus for Google Shopping Manager and we're going to look at that and how that helps us to create much more powerful, much more robust groups. Okay, so here we are finally in the actual Google Shopping bid management area where we define rules that we're going to create product groups so that we can bid on something inside of AdWords. So for the first rule, you'll see we have a column titled Ad Group, and the name of it is SKU1. That's just a moniker. You can put whatever you want there. It's just to remember what the concept behind the rule is. The next column you'll see is actually where the real power of this tool comes in. So you can choose amongst a whole bunch of different criteria. Instead of just ID, product type, and brand like AdWords has, you can do name, SKU, the price, the brand, the category, description, even the inventory. So there's a whole lot of stuff to choose from here. The next, the comparator, again, unlike AdWords where it has to be set to just equal to, you've got a lot of different options here. So you can say contains, contains the word, matches a regular expression, and you can also do negation things like does not contain, et cetera, et cetera. And then over here, you actually put the data. So this is a simple SKU bid. You can enter them in bulk here though, if you want, by just doing comma separated SKUs. And you can see we've done three. You can expand this box if you'd like. Okay, so that's a pretty basic rule. Let's go ahead and then talk about the next one. Okay, so this is our first compound rule group, and you'll notice that we have three different rules that we have here. You can add as many as you want by clicking the Add Rule button here, and then you can delete them by clicking this icon here. And what you'll notice also is that once you add more than one, you get this option here. It says items matching any of the following rules. You can also change it to say items matching all of the following rules. So this is kind of an and or thing. So in this configuration now, matching any of these rules, this rule is going to trigger if any of these three criteria are true. And what you'll see is that we're trying to create a sale group here. So if the description contains the word sale or clearance or blowout, we're going to match it to the sale group item and we're going to use promotional text sale items. So the next two groups here are for Sandals Generic and Sandals Branded. So we basically wanted to create a group for generic sandals versus sandals that are, you know, name brand, Nike, Reebok, etc. So this is another example of compound rules. You can see that we've set, in this case, items matching all of the following rules. So this is an and. So for this rule to trigger, the internal category has to contain the word sandal, and it also has to have a brand that's specified in this list here. In a similar sense, we have the same thing here, but branded sandals, and you can see we've set in this area uh, brand names that it has to match. 
Okay, the next example is probably the most intricate one we have here, but it's still very straightforward. Uh, we've got five different criteria, and it's an and rule, items matching all of the following rules. You'll see we have internal category has to contain the word boots, description has to contain the word leather, the price has to be greater than 200. And let's highlight that for a second. Again, unlike AdWords, you can do price level bids here, and you can see that we change the comparator to greater than, less than, etc. for a price bid. Okay, next one, description has to contain the word Italian. And then lastly, inventory, as in the quantity on hand of products, has to be greater than 20. So this would be a great example of what would happen if you had a client that came to you saying they've got a whole bunch of inventory in a warehouse of very expensive you know, leather Italian boots. So you can easily set something like this up. It's also really powerful because a lot of clients don't have their categorization system set up very well. So when they enter products like, let's say, Italian leather boots, it's just going to get lumped together with the rest of the boots and ditto with the sandals, etc. But the cool thing about Google Shopping Manager is that we allow you to dig in the title of the product or the description for any word that you want to find. So in this case, we're looking for the word leather in the description. We're looking for Italian in the description. You can also search for words in the actual name of the product. And that allows you to subdivide clients' different products into very small, granular groups, even if they haven't done so themselves in their categorization system. So you'll also see we've got a very detailed promotional text here that matches the category exactly. It says Italian leather surplus sale. So by correlating the promotional text with the group, we've got a great sales pitch here. So if we have a consumer that comes along and searches for something like this, and it does show on Google.com in a product listing ad, we're going to have a lot better tagline than someone who just says maybe something like free shipping or best shoes in town. We've got Italian leather surplus sale, and they just search for Italian boots. So that's really cool as well. And lastly, you'll see we have three rules that are based on price alone. Items that are $25 or less, items between $25 and $200, and items that are $200 or more. And this gives us some kind of granularity at the very end if we haven't matched any of the other more specific groups above this. And this is very similar to the all products target that you'll often see inside of AdWords, except it's a bit more granular. So for the items that are relatively cheap for $25 or less, we can do a somewhat low bid. And then for the higher price items that are $200 or more, we can obviously create a bid that's more expensive. So you might be wondering, what do I do if I've got 10,000 or even 100,000 products and I need to make hundreds or maybe even thousands of various groups and SKU level bids within this Google Shopping Manager tool? Yes, that would be cumbersome to deal with inside of a web interface, definitely. So to get around that, what you can do is maintain these rules inside of a CSV or comma separated value file. And that you can manage inside of something like Excel or any other spreadsheet program that you use. And then if you scroll down here, you'll see that we have an entire area that allows you to upload that CSV file, which we'll then process and then push into the system and create the feed that you want us to. So don't worry if you do have extensively large collections of products and you want to make lots of groups. We can manage it utilizing a spreadsheet uh, CSV file. Okay, to wrap things up, we're going to go ahead and run through a few options that agencies have utilizing Google Shopping Manager. The first we touched upon a bit previously, which is sync to AdWords. So we're always going to modify the feed and create the groups that you want utilizing AdWords labels. However, if you want to specify an actual campaign inside of an AdWords account, we can utilize the Google API and push the groups into that specific campaign that you created inside of Google Shopping Manager. Second, bidding. So if you'd like us to, we can add a new column for every rule that you have inside of GSM, and you can actually specify the bids there. And then when we do push the sync via the AdWords API, we'll actually go ahead and push the bid as well. Some clients like to do that. Some agencies like to do that. Others still want to use AdWords directly to modify the bid. We don't have any preference. It's up to you. And lastly, reporting. So we do have a fully integrated reporting system within Google Shopping Manager. I'm not going to run through it because we're kind of running short on time. That being said, it does give you full feedback on all of the groups that you create inside of Google Shopping Manager, how they're doing, how much money they're costing you, how much money they're generating in revenue. And one of the really powerful features of it is that it does allow you to get both SKU level feedback and grouping feedback. So if you wanted to dig down into a group, let's say, for example, the quote unquote generic sandals group that we were playing around with in the examples, 
And let's say you were trying to figure out how to increase the ROI in that group. Well, you might want to dig into that and see actual individual SKU performance. Utilizing the reporting tool that we've created, you can do that. And that allows you to refine groups and increase ROI in a fairly straightforward fashion. Okay, thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions about Google Shopping Manager or any of the other materials that we covered, feel free to contact us. You can see the email on the screen and the phone number as well. Good luck out there on Google Shopping.